Hi there, this is Katie from The Practical Escapist, and today we are going to be working on a very exciting recipe here in The Practical Escapist Kitchen. This recipe is from a movie that is very near and dear to my heart, Kiki's Delivery Service. It's been one of my favorite movies since I was a kid, and today we're making herring and pumpkin pot pie. But there's a little twist to it. There's actually not going to be any herring in it. This is going to be vegan. By the way, this is mystery. Every young witch in training needs a cat familiar. Right, buddy? That's right. take a look at our ingredients here. We have some flour, some coconut oil, and we're also going to use some salt for our crust. We're making a vegan puff pastry crust. Here we have some capers. Now most recipes I've seen have used black olives. We're going to be using capers today for two reasons. One, I like capers, and two, I actually think that when you look in the movie, it looks more like capers than olives. That's just me. A lot of other people have used black olives instead, so maybe that's actually a canon thing. For the actual herring part, we're making chickpea fish. So we're going to take chickpeas. We have a can of chickpeas. You can also use cooked chickpeas that you made yourself. And uh, we're gonna use some nori. Now, we just have this roasted seaweed snack nori here. You can also use regular nori, and that's totally fine to do. This is just what we happen to have on hand, so this is what we're using. We have some oil. We have a tin of pumpkin, which is pureed. It's pure pumpkin. It is not pumpkin pie filling. Very important difference. We have a little bit of, uh, this is actually just generic vegetable soup base. We're going to use a little bit of that. We have some potatoes. We're going to be using those skin on. One onion, three carrots, two of them are quite small, one of them is large, and a celery stalk, and spices to taste, including some nutritional yeast. We have some oil as well. So those are all our ingredients for what we're going to be doing today. Begin by preheating your oven to 400 degrees. We're going to be peeling our carrots. Dice your carrots and not your fingers. Very important. Chop your onions. Onions. There we go. Start cooking your onions, put some oil in there. I prefer avocado oil. I cook them on medium low until they start getting transparent and smelling real good. Once the onions are looking kind of like this, you can add your other vegetables in. Let the vegetables do their thing for a little bit. You might want to add a little more oil. While your vegetables are cooking, season them to taste with sea salt, black pepper, about a tablespoon of nutritional yeast, and your soup base. Mix well. Should be smelling pretty good about now. At this point in the cooking, the vegetables are not soft yet. So we're going to start to add our pumpkin puree. Stir it in until you have a nice kind of pasty vegetable mix. If you want it to have a little bit of liquid, you can add a bit of non-dairy milk. Here I have some unsweetened coconut milk. I'm going to add just a little bit more. This is the kind of consistency you want it to have. A little bit wet, but not too wet. Because remember, it's going into a pot pie. We don't want it to be too dry, especially considering we're going to be using chickpeas, which have a tendency to get quite dry as this. We want it to be kind of thicker than a thick stick. 
At this stage, cover your vegetables for a little bit to let them steam and soften. You don't want them to be too soft as they're still gonna go in the oven, but you want them to be soft enough. Your vegetables are done when they can be easily pierced with a fork and they're nice and soft, but not, again, too soft. Now you can go ahead and remove your vegetables from the heat. At this stage in the recipe, we're now going to drain our chickpeas. So if you are using ones that you cooked, then that's totally fine. You don't really need to do this step. If you're using chickpeas in a can, you wanna drain them like so. And it's good to keep the liquid and set it aside because the liquid that results from chickpeas is called aquafaba and it can be used for things such as uh, vegan meringue and other things like that and uh, it can be used in place of egg whites and a lot of vegan recipes so you might want to hold on to that we're not going to use it for this recipe we might use it for another one sometimes give them a good rinse and transfer them to a bowl for this next step we're going to be making the herring, quote unquote. So here are our chickpeas. We're gonna chop up the nori next. So if you have a single sheet of nori, you can go ahead and slice that up on its own. Here we have a little stack of nori, because again, that's what we have on hand. So we're gonna slice that up into little chunks. We're gonna use the whole thing and I'm gonna try to refrain from eating it because it's delicious. You want to slice that into little tiny, tiny, itty bitty pieces because this is what's going to give us our fishy flavor once that is significantly small. You can take your old chickpeas and you can just dump the nori right in there. Even if your nori is salted, you want to add a little bit of salt in there but not too much because now I'm going to show you my secret ingredient. So some of you may find this a little bit odd and that's okay, but trust me when I say that I have made many a vegan tuna and used pickle juice as a brining flavor. So you just pour a bit in because you need to have a little bit of liquid as well, otherwise it'll get very dry. So pour a little in, then you take your friend potato masher, and you mash all of this together. This may take a few minutes, depending on how cooked your chickpeas are. Take your time with it, don't rush it. A lot of the recipes I found online for a replica of this kind of pie used cupid snacks, which are actually pickled herring. So this is uh, really fitting our theme to have pickle juice in there. Uh, once you're looking mostly mashed, then you can set them aside. If you want to add more pickle juice after to make it less dry, you can totally go ahead and do that. I'm also going to add a little bit of nutritional yeast in there. Then we're going to mix it around some more. Now you'll see it has a nice soft looking consistency. It's not too chunky at this point. If you add more liquid, that will help. All in all, measurement wise, you'll probably want to add about two tablespoons of pickle juice and about two tablespoons of nutritional yeast to get this to the kind of flavor that we're looking for. That nice savory flavor that's not too overpoweringly briny or too overpoweringly fishy. Because the nori, there's quite a bit of it in there. We want it to be more subtle, so we add a little more of a savory flavor to offset that. Now you can set this aside. And while your vegetables are cooking, you can go ahead and work on your crust. So first we're gonna take a large bowl. We're going to put two cups of flour in the bowl. We're making a vegan puff pastry. So in order to do that, we have our flour and we're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt in there as well. And we're going to stir those together and sometimes the best tool is your hands. We have three quarters of a cup of coconut oil because obviously we're not using butter. So the recipe I found called for coconut oil, which has a very similar consistency. Now the thing with coconut oil, you have to make sure that you're not using the liquid variety because you want it to have the same consistency as butter when you're using it. So make sure that it is solid. If it starts to get soft, yeah, that's fine. 
but you don't want it to be melted. So now you just get right in there with your hands and you cut in the coconut oil. And uh, try to do it quickly because your hands will melt the oil. So do this until it starts to resemble coarse sand or little pea shapes. Very next step is to add a quarter of a cup of cold water into the mixture. And this is what's going to make it all come together and form the dough. I found this recipe on the internet for the vegan puff pastry from heartofabaker.com. So here we seem to have a nice dough. If your dough, however, is too dry, you can always add a little bit more water. Just do a little bit at a time. Once you have a nice soft dough, we're going to divide it into two. One for the top crust and one for the bottom crust. And you'll actually want to take slightly more for the top crust because we're going to do some fun stuff with that as well. Turn out your bottom crust onto a lightly floured surface and you're going to roll it out. If it's too sticky, put more flour on it. And once it's done, transfer to a lightly greased baking pan. So we have our crust on the bottom here. We're next going to do our layer of faux herring. I've seen some recipes where they combine the two. I think it, personally for this recipe, I think it'll be better if we do layers. Once you have a nice uniform layer of your fake fish, you can go ahead and top it with the vegetables next. Make sure that's spread out nice and evenly as well. And we need to roll out the other half of our dough next. Pastries and baked goods are not my specialty. I've said it before. <laughs> if you've heard me on stream ever, then you know this for a fact. They all look great. They all look great tasty. So if it looks like this, that's okay because we have our pièce de résistance, and this is very important if you're trying to make this uh, true to the Kiki's delivery service look. So we have some dough that we reserved here. We're going to roll this out. We gotta make a little fish for the top. Little fish. And that little fellow is gonna go right on the very tippy top here. Now this is not going to look exactly like the movie because our puff pastry did not 100% turn out. I'm sure it'll be nice and flaky once it's baked. We're just going to score the top a little bit. Now that we've got our little fish and our cheater lines, we're going to take out our keepers and we're going to put them in each corner. So now our little fake fish pie is ready to go into the oven. Looks cute, it's a little messy, huh? We're in the oven, and now we're going to leave it for about 20 minutes or so. And we'll come back to it and see what happens. So that ended up being a little closer to 30 minutes, but we have it finished now. I did a little trick and I put it under the broiler for the last few minutes just to give that upper crust that kind of brown look that's visible in the movie. So here's how it turned out. It's not going to win us any great British Bake Off contests, but it looks all right. So I got a friendly little fish on it. And now finally we're going to cut into this. We're going to see how it holds up as an actual pot pie. And we're going to see how it tastes, of course. So the crust uh, is actually quite flaky, which is perfect. Here's how it looks when it's been sliced. Now we have to test it. So I have my little slice of pot pie here. It's very late, <laughs> but I'm gonna eat it anyway because I wanna see how it turned out. I'm gonna try 
try to make sure I get a little bit of everything there. It held together nicely on the inside, even if the crust was not perfect. We're going to go ahead and have a bite here. Mm. Yeah, that definitely turned out well. The vegetables are good. It tastes good together with the um, fake fish, which is not very overpowering. It doesn't look as good as Madame's. And it's um, definitely not made with actual herring, but I think it's pretty good. So, all that said, thank you so much for joining me here at The Practical Escapist. If you like what you saw, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button and to subscribe as well, because I'm going to be posting videos for now, once a month. But maybe as time goes on, maybe I'll do a little bit more. I also stream weekly on twitch.tv slash The Practical Escapist, and I'm going to be posting pop culture related recipes that I'm developing and working on uh, here on my YouTube channel. So if you have any suggestions at all, please throw them my way. I will veganize anything. Send me a picture of a roast turkey and I'll still find a way to make it vegan. Send me your ideas. Nothing is off limits. So again, thanks for joining and I hope to see you next time. Weak.